Some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Hello and welcome to the Think It's All Over with Gary and Rory is the world light welterweight champion who recently beat David Beckham to become Mancunian of the Year. Now there's a fight I'd like to have been at. <laughs> Ricky Hatton. <laughs> David Gatt is away this week, so we welcome back Sharon Davis. <laughs> With Sharon and Jonathan is 2001's World Rally Champion who drove his first ever car at the age of eight in a local field, although he did swerve round a furtive looking Rory who was busy wooing a Gloucester Old Spot at the time. <laughs> Richard Burns! <laughs> we kick off with handbags all about the little tiffs that break out between sports people. Gary, Rory and Ricky, your feud is between British world champions past and present. And Lewis sensing that this is going to be his contest. There's a great right hand. Down he goes. Surely that's it all over. What a punch. Fantastic. And the Embassy World Snooker Champion for 1982 is Alex Perrican Higgins. So that's world heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis and twice world snooker champion Alex Higgins. So why the bad blood between two of the country's best known brawlers? It's possible to see the end, end, uh, the end of that clip. I'm sure it is. Can we have a look? Breaks your heart, doesn't it, when your wife and kids find out where you are? <laughs> <laughs> the moment you win some money, they turn up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you might have been crying because you missed last order. <laughs> Great to have Ricky the Hitman Hatton on the show, eh? Fantastic. Yeah. The big question is, I always want to ask a boxer, you have to refrain from sex before a big fight? Um, well, yeah, it is a good thing, isn't it? You know, it says it weakens legs, you know, so... Oh, right. <laughs> That's what well, they say. Well, how do you do sex, then? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think I should refrain from sex, because all my big fights happen just after I've had sex, funnily enough. <laughs> what, with the pimp? <laughs> When you're playing uh, football, go. Do you re refrain from sex before a big match? Um, yeah, generally. I did. Only once I remember. I did it in the morning of a game. Really? Yeah. And um, did Mark Lawrence in mind? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was quite happy to go along with it. <laughs> yeah. And what happened? I scored a hat trick. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> so I was very superstitious. So asked, every week after that, I said, "Well, <laughs> <laughs> any sex stuff before a big fight, you've got to." We've got to knock it on the head. I mean, I, I go to bed with me box. Knock it on, on the head. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that would make you angry, wouldn't it? <laughs> Two weeks before me fight, I go to bed with me boxing gloves on. Oh. Why is that? Take no, so take no chances. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> some people have sex with other people. <laughs> <laughs> so how many fights are you do in a year? <laughs> in a sort of average um, boxing year? I would say about four. I had five last year. Oh, five. Call yourself <laughs> Gary. Fight, call himself a sportsman. Oh. When Gary was a top centre forward with Spurs, he'd, he'd play well 38 league games. Then with European and Cup games, 38. That is it. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever failed a, a weigh-in? I have failed a weigh-in once. I was uh, three ounces over, and uh, it was at the Trafford Centre in Manchester, and they had a big TV screen, a big stage there, and all that. And I failed this. I failed the weight by three ounces, and they said, "So go and get your kecks off then." I thought, I hope my pecker don't come on that screen there. <laughs> <laughs> we had your boxing gloves on, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> I, once, I once failed by um, three ounces. Oh, let's go through customs, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky, can I ask you, what did you think of the celebrity boxing on TV? I thought it was all right. It was a good, uh, good laugh. They give it the roll, didn't they? Because I, but... I was going to go in for that, and I was all lined up, but unfortunately they found the perfect opponent for me. But then Doc Cotton pulled out at the last <laughs> She got a better offer to go and box Aldi Harrison for the title. <laughs> did they ask you, really? Yeah, they did ask me. Oh, please do it. <laughs> I couldn't do it. They can't find someone with my speed, <laughs> my grace, and my incredible ability to run fast. <laughs> yeah, not now that Barbara Cartland's dead, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, Higgins and Lewis 
fell out. Mm -hmm. I think it's to do with um, a little trick they played on Lennox Lewis, because he, he fancied himself a snooker player, didn't he? And he was hustling some mates, and some, one Paul, of his mates bumped Paul, into... Paul. Was it Paul? Paul? And I think one of his mates bumped into Hurricane Higgins in the street and said, come back here and, and play Paul with Lennox Lewis. And Is the correct answer for three points? Well done. <laughs> Here is trainer Eugene Maloney, a former member of the Lennox Lewis entourage, telling the story. Uh, Lennox loves playing pool with his friends and obviously having a side bet and taking the money. I remember one day we was round the ass playing, we was all losing a nice few quid, had to pop out for five minutes and bumped into Alex Higgins. Hello Alex, would you like to come round your boss's house for a little while going pool? I'd love to, blah blah blah. Brought him round. I knew Lennox would never recognise him when we got there, so it was a right touch. We went in, started playing. Obviously Alex was taking the cleanest, didn't stop winning games. Um, Lennox's brother Dennis walked into the room. Hello you, hello Alex. Lennox, how do you know Alex? Everybody knows Alex Higgins, the Arakan, he's former world snooker champion. So Alex, ah, you've had me here, boom, so that's it. <laughs> so Lennox Lewis had absolutely no idea who Alex Higgins was. Not surprising really, neither did Alex Higgins. <laughs> In his book, Lennox Lewis said, having an orgasm is like running up the stairs, which Thora Heard can only manage with the help of an electrical aid. <laughs> and she needs a stand of stair lift as well. <laughs> Sharon, Jonathan and Richard, your spat concerns Richard's rally-driving rival and fellow Briton, Colin McRae. Here he is, crashing out of last year's New Zealand rally. McRae knows now is the time to dig deep on this seaside stage. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. But it's too late. The Scott barrels off the road and into a thicket. <laughs> now, it was after that race that Colin McRae announced that he and his co-driver, Nicky Grist, were parting company after six years sitting next to each other in the front seat every day. So what was the straw that broke the camel's back? Sharon's team. Am I right in thinking, though, that he would have failed that driving test? Because he didn't use his rear view window at all, did he? His it's rear view, view window. window. <laughs> Well, you know what I meant. <laughs> you fill in the gaps. <laughs> I'm busy. I think you'll find that it was a Saturday morning and um, your show had just come on Radio 2 and they were trying to fight him to turn it off. Oh. Can we have a look at the clip again, though? Because I... I, it's something that doesn't quite make sense to me. There, there he is, there's the driver. He's, they have a bloke, it's just a child. He's driving a child. No wonder he can't do the job, he probably doesn't know how to read a map. He's like a six-year-old. He's got Jeanette Cranky in the car. If you were sat next to Colin, you probably wouldn't want to see what's going on either. What's he like, is he a bad driver? No, he's a great driver, but occasionally, like we all do, like those without a, whatever, cast the first stone and all that stuff. Never crashed in my life. Do we have okay, some now you are obviously on drugs this evening. <laughs> <laughs> are they very small or is they, are they very low in the car? They're just very low in the car. The engineers don't want you sat too... Well, the co-driver's sat too high. We have to sit where we can see the road, obviously. So you have to see, sit where you can see the road, but the person navigating... <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got you. It'd be better than sitting with Jonathan, whose main consideration when buying a car is whether it's got a DVD player in it. <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in safety as well, but mainly I just want to keep the kids quiet in the back. <laughs> Is that wrong? <laughs> sure, a crumple zone might be useful, but f*** <laughs> we've all got to die someday. They might as well go watching Barney. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were chatting cars, weren't we? we in the green room, we were chatting cars. He goes, I've got a Previa. Yeah, well, like Paul McCartney in the bedroom, when I'm choosing a new model, I look for extra leg room. <laughs> Do you, do you hear what Paul McCartney got ahead of Christmas? Yeah. He got to a plane and he got to a lady shaved for the other leg. <laughs> do you like driving fast? Yeah. Do you like to be Sharon. driven fast? Sharon's been with Colin's father. Have you? <laughs> I yes, believe. I did, yeah. Jimmy McRae, years ago. Fantastic. Well, I spent the whole time like this, though. I couldn't see anything. Yeah. The window. And the what about... What about... What about... <laughs> you let yourself in for that. <laughs> if the vans are walking, don't come knocking. I guess they fell out, but you're the expert. They did, yeah, they fell out. I think there were a couple of occasions uh, last year and the year before when Nicky was interviewed and uh, seemed to be t saying that he was 
telling Colin when to steer, brake and accelerate, which kind of negates the need for a driver. So um, I think in the end it just got a little bit too much and they called it a day. I'll give you three points for that, well done. Yes, the final straw was the row that followed that crash where McRae claimed that Grist gave one direction and Grist claimed he said something entirely different, with the result that they ended up going headlong into a ditch. After another crash, one journalist blamed McRae. He pushed too hard too early into the dense Welsh bush. So, him and Michael Douglas then. <laughs> And at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and Sharon's team have three points. <laughs> it's time to ask the question, what's going on? Gary's team, take a look at this. So, uh, what was going on there, guys? We're just team? sorry, can we just see a little bit of that again? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Denim hot pants and the long, long leg. That's the one. I don't know if you recognise that. It's a girl called Daniela Hantakova. Which, coincidentally, when I saw that, my hand took over. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the silence of follow one of your earlier gags, it was just the silence and then some sobbing. It was like Christmas with Les Dennis. <laughs> What sort of girls do you go for, Gary? Um, <laughs> what about you, Ricky? What oh, girls do I go for? Uh, big breasted, a bit like yourself, Laurie. <laughs> <laughs> big breasted? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. While we're on the subject, what the dickens has happened to Leslie Ash's lips? <laughs> it looks like someone's pulled the ripcord on a f dinghy. <laughs> They were doing a charity, and I think it was for the children of Chernobyl victims, wasn't it? A charity. Well, it's slightly more than that. It was before a specific tournament. Tennis tournament. <laughs> <laughs> you, the face of BBC Sport well. speaks. <laughs> That was a catwalk event held prior to the inaugural Collins Cup between Europe and the USA when the world's top women <laughs> tennis players modelled the latest fashions in the name of charity. When the men's tennis players took to the catwalk, Pete Sampras was heckled by anti-fur campaigners until it was pointed out that he was naked. <laughs> Sharon's team, here's yours. So, what was that all about? I think I know that. Was that the moment when they found out that Will Young had won Pop Idol? <laughs> <laughs> Over the moon, they were. I don't think he was using his hands to hold that towel up, though. Really? <laughs> They're celebrating the fact that a footballer has complete, for the first time this century, has completed the Sun Fun crossword. <laughs> <laughs> Something to do with uh, draws and the fact that they were very pleased with their draw. I think they had Arsenal, didn't they? Is the correct answer for three points, but who are they? Oxford. Oxford, Oxford correct. Correct. Well done. Incredible work. That was the view from Oxford United's dressing room of striker Jefferson Lewis's restrained reaction to his team drawing Arsenal in the third round of the FA Cup. That clip was actually shown on last month's Sports Review of the Year, after which Gary quipped... Uh, all I can say is thank heavens it wasn't Dion Dublin, but... Uh... <laughs> Sadly, Gary had no idea that Dion Dublin was in the studio, and how Dion laughed. <laughs> a similar incident occurred in the 80s in the Leicester dressing room, when a celebrating Gary Lineker's bitches was spared by a strategically placed crisp. <laughs> So, at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and Sharon's team have six. <laughs> it's time to hear about some pathetic excuses now. Gary's team, it's Ricky's favourite team, Manchester City, for you, and their Gallic mood merchant, Nicholas Anelka. No flag, and rightly so, this is Anelka. Right Phillips up with him, Anelka, good shot. Third on the right from Sanji High. And, uh, 
not the best moment of the match for Nicholas Anelka. That was Anelka failing to hit a barn door in the cup against Liverpool the other day. Now, Nicholas was recently called up to the front squad, but turned them down flat. Why? Gary's team. Uh, now, Ricky, you are a big blue sport, aren't you? You've got a box at Main Road, haven't you? I have, yeah. I've got a box. I had one there for the last two seasons. Sometimes my dad lets me stand on it. <laughs> <laughs> What makes you support City as opposed to United? Well, basically, because I'm from Manchester, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but Nelka, I mean, he's, he's moody, isn't he? He doesn't always get on with his teammates, but you've got to say he's very fast, isn't he? He's lightning. Man, you've got to keep on your toes around my side. <laughs> <laughs> it is different. It's different. You've got three lions on your shirt. Mm. France, you've got a big cock on your chest. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> What's that like, Jonathan, having a big cock on your chest? <laughs> It's, it's a burden. <laughs> <laughs> but I try and share it with as many people as possible. <laughs> I think I once read that you're you, um, you his idol, in fact. He definitely said he's the most idle player I've ever seen. That <laughs> I'm too sure. It's very good. It's spooky. When he acts, it's fantastic. <laughs> I'll tell you how he didn't get an Oscar That's for playing fair. Dobby the house self. I do. <laughs> Please don't make me have a toast, Chris Master. <laughs> Dobby be good. <laughs> Dobby likes salt and vinegar, Master. <laughs> Dobby do anything for money, Master. <laughs> I think he do that. He, was, he wasn't the first choice. Was he was late call up, and he, he suspected that the, the French manager didn't really love him enough to. I'll give you three points for that. Yes, well done. <laughs> yep. The reason that he gave is that the French coach didn't love him enough. He said, I need to feel wanted in order to give my best. This is not the reaction of a spoilt child. <laughs> Nicholas Anelka isn't the only footballer to refuse to play for his country. David Seaman sensationally quit in the 51st minute against Brazil. <laughs> Anelka is known throughout football as a sulky, money-grabbing, moody prima donna. In fact, it's got so bad that walkers have signed him up for a crisp ad. <laughs> Sharon Seam, it's the winner of the Man United Donald Pleasant's Lookalike competition, three years running for you, Fabian Bartes. Earlier this season, he delayed Fulham's Steed Malbronk, taking a penalty, repeating the antics he used against Leicester last season. Is it ready, but not uh, Bartes? Bit of gamesmanship here, the whistle goes, and the penalty is taken, but Andy does so. Blows for it to be retaken. But it's maybe a little fortunate there. But the pressure even more now on Muzzy, is it? To make it count for the equaliser. And he doesn't. Bartes has won the day. Now, both times the penalty was eventually missed. But what excuse did Bartes have for his behaviour? Did you see anyone see Gary in the paper over there? There's a photograph of Gary taken surreptitiously on a beach. Did you see it? What, you don't buy Zipper magazine? What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> There's well, a picture of like the best showbiz bodies on the beach and they had like all the top names and for some reason Gary was on there as well. Must have been a slow news day. And, uh, <laughs> but he lo he's looking buff. Yeah. He got nine out of ten. Ooh, for what? Only nine. You only you got nine out of ten. Russell Crowe got like six or something. And you? They decided not to put me in because he gave me an unfair advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to the question, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> Fabian, the Frenchman, was banging Fabian. his boots against <laughs> the boots, pole, it? the goal pole. Yeah. The goal <laughs> pole. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Why are you so pedantic? <laughs> I'm not calling it a pole. Then you might get a bit of lap dancing out matter, there. <laughs> Give Posh something to do at half time. <laughs> He was uh, basically cleaning his boots against the post, yeah, but it was all a psyche act. Correct for three points. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> The reason given was that Fabian Bartes urgently needed to clean his boots before the kick was taken. There had already been a delay to the taking of the kick as the physio removed Roy Keane's fist from the ref's throat and fished the whistle out of his arse. <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have six points and Sharon's team have nine.
Time now for our regulars to caress a complete stranger as we play Field of Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're first this week. If you'd like to take your position, do you have the traditional 90 seconds to work out who's between you? Hang on. Hang on. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? And your time starts now. Oh, it's moving. Oh, yeah. There's something here. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what is happening here? Jesus. It's Garrett, I think, the studio, I think the studio has fallen on its side. When we got <laughs> ah, someone wearing gloves. Scouser, is it? <laughs> no fingerprints. Oh, hang on. I've got a ball. I know, Gary, but please, it's no time for this. <laughs> it's one of these silly um, upper class games, isn't it? Uh, like, uh, <laughs> um, is it Hunt the Chin or something like that? <laughs> Eaton Wall game, something no. like that? Eaton Fives, that's a game. Eaton Fives, Eaton. Robin Mason and Tom Dunbar, the National Fair for Eaton Fives. <laughs> Sharon and Jonathan. Sharon, your chance. Yes, hey. Feel the I'm sportsman, Sharon. Get to your places. 90 seconds as well. Blindfolds on when you get there. Sharon, don't be nervous. I know this is the first time for you, but listen, I'm here for you if you need me. <laughs> <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I was under, I was harsh. <laughs> Bit of rubber going in here. And a good arm. Oh, come back here, where are you going? <laughs> What's happened? Wait, I didn't, see? honestly, I didn't touch her, I just went for an <laughs> arm. <laughs> let's, let's carry on regardless, because it's, <laughs> it's a shame to waste the moment, isn't it? You don't want to bother with him. He's a boy. He thinks a clitoris is a new car from Renault. Come on, come over here. If he was a man, he wouldn't be able to find it anyway. Oh, she's back. <laughs> Hit it. Right? Are, you two, are, you, are you feeling her? I am. Have you not found her? She's like tipping the velvet, the sporting version. Isn't <laughs> I'm just going to let Bit it happen. serious. She's gone again. Bit of serious. <laughs> Wet suit, water, water running. Well, I think it's someone yeah. who can't make up her mind what sport she wants to do. <laughs> Maybe she's good at lots of things. Hey, like, um, uh, what's an Iron Man? Yeah, sport. someone like an Iron Man. Oh. Yeah, she's come back in a wheelchair. Okay. She's oh, going for the Special Olympics. Olympics. <laughs> That's not a bad move. So you don't do well. Exercise. You don't do well normally. Pretend oh, you can't walk. There you <laughs> go. It's medal time. Right, so we have a triathlete. Come on uh, then. I, I, need to, I need to check the saddle is the right... Is it? <laughs> Time's running out. Because I tell you... Uh, it's a, the only lady I can think of that's fantastic is a lady called Jodie Swallow. Jodie Swallow, three points, well done. Well done. <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and Sharon's team have twelve. <laughs> We bring the show to a shuddering halt by playing the name game. The leaders go first. It's Sharon's team. So, 90 seconds, as many names as you can. Richard, can you pass those along, please? Jonathan. Oh, are we in the lead, Nick? You are in the lead, yes. Press. And your time... Hold on! Starts now! Ready? Uh, the manager of Leeds uh, is a bit of a woo, a bit where, a wit woo. His first name is after the chocolate orange that you tap and unwrap. Terry Venables. There you go, thank you. Uh, second name is a Scottish rally driver. He's like, oh, you little navigator, I'll bust your bloody head. Colin McQuay, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, this lady, uh, triathlete, if she does what it says on the can, she'll make a lot of fellas very, very happy. Swallow, <laughs> uh, 
the, uh, this one is, uh, it's like the second name is a pool player. Second name is what dads do at weddings when they do a dance here. They do the twist. Twist, OK, first name is, is lost without his argonauts. He is lost Jason. without... Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Se uh, second name, once again, if a dad, this is a player, football player, I think he's for Knott's Voice. If, you're, if an old bloke wanted to dance with a young lady, he said, hey, fancy her? Fancy, in a disco, can't you go fancy her? Dance, uh, Fancy her. What's another name for a policeman? Bobby. Bobby. Bob, uh, no, no, but what's cop, another name? A cop. It sounds like that. But a name for a dance? Who is he? No, f***ing <laughs> Eugene Bopp! <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, oh. I can have that one. No, you uh, can't have that. Uh, a Span he's a rally driver from Spain. His first Carlos name is... Sainz. Herzl... Is that Carlos, Carlos Sainz? Sainz? No, his first name is... Jesus Jesus the Son of Christ. Puras. Puras. Yeah, Puras. Jesus Puras. Puras, yeah. OK. For, uh, all right. Uh, last name is, who makes my suits? Who makes my suits? Taylor. Oh, Taylor. Here's a tailor. First name, if I was to give you a little... Well, what am I doing now? Touch. Yeah, what else am I doing? Feel. Feel. So, no, no, not so quick. Not so quick. That's right, but not so quick. What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? It's a man's name. What, what am I doing? You like that, don't I you? I think that's we've a, got it. We've <laughs> got that's it. We've got it. That's a little bit right there you like, don't you? <laughs> See, that's often neglected. What? Are you okay? Phil, the, the power, power Taylor. Oh, have we got that? Got no, you didn't. Yeah. So you've moved on to 17, which means that nine will win it for you. Nine. Your time, yes, time starts now. Um, oof, sorry, hang on. This is um, a snooker player. Wind. Uh, strong Jimmy wind. Jimmy Whirlwind. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Whirlwind White. Jimmy Whirlwind White. No, think of another even stronger Alex wind. Alex Hurricane Higgins. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester City player, think of a beard, like a little... Go, go to. Yeah, sure. Go to. Sean. Um, <laughs> Tom. Yeah? Or Michael Tom. Very good. Excellent. This is... Oh, dear. Um, <laughs> this was Joe Calzaga's last opponent, you know, and it's... It, you know, if... Chocker Pug one. That's Very exactly good. what I was about to say. This is a leggy Slovak tennis star we saw earlier, and uh, coincidentally, Antikova. when I saw her... So my Daniela. Daniela. Very good. Um, this is an e Egyptian player who now plays Everton. And he's Said. Very good. And he has that. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, yeah very, he's a very good guy. Uh, now, this is a boxer. He's Russian. His first name is the same as Gorbachev. Russian for Michael. Which Mikhail. is Mikhail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think you might have played him. Lollipop. That's exactly right. Yeah. Sorry. This is uh, Aston Villa st Swedish striker. Um, Latin for Mark. <laughs> And Marcus. Uh, what? <laughs> Marcus, yeah. Um, if he's a New Zealand rugby player, he'd be an. He'll be a... Maori. Kiwi. No, what they call it. <laughs> what colour? All black. Yeah. Marcus. All black. <laughs> <laughs> Think of the Iraqi leader, Saddam Saddam. Hussein. Hussein. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Welsh weightlifter. Um... <laughs> Welsh weightlifter. <laughs> So, Sharon's team have 17, but Gary's team have nicked it with 18. Oh. So, our thanks to Sharon, Jonathan and Richard, Gary, Rory and Ricky. We're all off to politely refuse the offer of a lift home from Richard. My name's Nick Hancock. I think it's all over. It is now. Patrick Hill picks up the last of Battle on BBC One in 35 minutes with guests Tamsin Althwaite, Jeremy Clarkson and Supergrass. There's film comedy after that with shampoos and set twos. The Big Tease is at 10 past 11.